Hello, good day to all of you. Um, this is a lecture on Acts 99 and my part uh, together with Sir Dennis uh, Lavindo would be carry out harvest and post harvest operations. So this is actually a two day uh, session for this subject. You know? And uh, let me uh, start by giving you an introduction on the importance of post-harvest and post-harvest operation. Okay, you probably you have heard on the news about the impending uh, food problem. There will be there will be a problem in the food supply. You know, at the uh, sa Pilipinas. Si President Bongbong Marcos ay uh, kaagad niyang naramdam, naramdaman yung threat ng impending food problem. So, uh, base dito sa isang nabasa ko ng artikulo, ano, paano pakakainin kaya ang uh, tao sa mundo? And by the year 2050, which will be uh, some some 20, 28 years to go, there will be 9 billion people. And our global food system is facing a crisis. One third of the world's available food either spoils or is thrown away before it ever reaches a plate. You know? While 1.2 billion people go to bed hungry or undernourished, what uh, this uh, slide is saying is that maraming na sasayang na pagkain at kung iipunin mo yung pagkain na yun ay kayang magpakain ng 1.2 billion na mga taong natutulog ng gutom. Right, let me uh, continue. You know? Another uh, information there are 1.3 billion tons. I don't know how to count billions. You know? uh, 1 billion is 1 million million. And there are 1.3 billion tons tonelada. Ang isang tonelada ay 1,000 kilos. There are 1.3 billion tons of food is wasted or lost each year. This is, represents 340 pounds. No? So halos halos yan ay kulang-kulang uh, na o oh, mahigit sa daang kilo of food lost or wasted <clears throat> for every person on the planet. And then 1.6 billion people perfectly consumable food that either spoils or get thrown away could feed 1.6 billion more people each year. Ito ay pagkain na, no? Uh, naluto na ito, nasa restaurant na ito, binili na ito. And yet, karamihan dyan at tayo ay guilty dyan, maybe you also, ay guilty na maraming pagkain pa rin ang nasasayang. No? And in terms of money, in terms of value, one trillion. Kanina, we we're talking about billions. Now, this is trillion. The retail value of loss and wasted foods, food cost the global economy more than the combined 215 profits of the Fortune 500. Fortune 500 are the list of top businesses around the world. Another uh, information about unconsumed food comes in two forms. Mga pagkain hindi nakakonsume, hindi nakakain. Ano itong dalawang bagay na ito? Una, one-third consumer waste. no Waste occur toward the back end of the food chain where consumers buy too much and throw away excess foods. Meaning, yung ginabanggit ko kanina, mga sayang na pagkain na yan, luto na yan. And then two-third, no? ito ang ating pag-uusapan, ano? is the post-harvest loss. So, one-third yung nasasayang, luto na yung pagkain, ano, prepared na sayang yun. But the greater part, two-third of the part, is the post-harvest loss. Meaning, pagkatapos maani, 
doon nagkakaroon ng loss. You know? Loss of course at the front of the food chain when food rots in the pill or is lost as a result of poor transportation networks or spoils in markets that lack proper storage and preservation equipment and practices. Right? So think about that. Doon sa tinatawag na food chain, diyan nangyayari ang great, great loss. At yan sinasabi, transportation, nabulok sa bukid, uh, sa market, no? dahil walang proper storage or preservation equipment. So imagine if one third of goods never made it to, cons uh, to customers. Hindi na nakarating sa customer. One third. This is a reality of food supply whose loss one third of the food produced globally. Nawaw ano na ito, nasira na ito, nabulok na ito. Hindi na nakarating sa consumer. I was uh, uh, looking at the dito sa mga supermarkets. Ano dyan sa Robinson sa Tagaytay. Minsan kumaparada ko sa basement and may mga times na amoy na amoy yung mga rotted or rotting vegetables and fruits. Alam na alam mo naman. So ibig sabihin ito yung mga hindi na benta at nabulok na. So another talagang inalagaan mo buti ang mga halaman mo. You fertilize it. You, you water it and then after na kasi mga pamunga at yung mga best uh, best fruits pa or best produce mo na nakarating sa market and yet they 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 they, lock, they are lost no food loss and waste happens all along the pathway to the plate so it starts at the farmers the processor distributors retailers up to the consumer and there are 1.3 billion tons again you know, of food wasted could feed 1.6 billion people No. Uh, so look at this ano? so ito yung mga mga data ng mga losses oh, yung na, nawawala na, na, na nabubulok na no? like in fruits ano? loss is between 6.7 to 15.88 percent in vegetables it's 4.58 to 12.44 percent and oil seeds 3 to 9.96 and so on and so forth. Like uh, in poultry, 6.74, uh, meat, 2.71, and in milk is almost 1%. And fish is 5.23 to 10.22. These are actually losses, post-harvest losses. At malamang ngayon, may intindihan nyo na kung bakit po ito inuna sa inyong ipaliwanag. Because what we are actually trying to realize is not just for the information, for the skills that kayo ay magkaroon ng NC2 or makapasa rito, but rather for you to realize that malaki ang nawawala if we were not able to do something about those uh, produce ng agriculture. No? Also, sa capacity ng cold storage, one country sa ang sample dito ay actually this is in India no maliit lang yung kanilang capacity for storage you know? so talagang expect mo na na marami ang magkakaroon ng losses dito sa pag, sa mga pagkain nito and this is the bigger version you know? kanina binanggit natin and this one tells us that 45% almost kalahati ng fruits and vegetables ay nawawala as well as the fruits and tubers ang nawawala and these are these are uh, global global ano ito uh, global figures not just in the philippines so if we are going to look into you know, in details you know, let us try to look at this uh, graphics you know. it says here magsisimula yan sa farm sa farm, siyempre dyan tayo magtatanim na ng klase ng gulay, putas, uh, root crops, plantation crops, at mamumunga yan. No? But 40, 46% of the bunga 
O kaya yung harvest mo ng mga gulay, 46% of it ay defected. May depensya. And then 57% mabubulok. 20% ay damaged at wala namang discard. No? Wala tinapon. And then pagdating mo sa packing house, no? meron pa rin losses. 22% defected na akrating na roon pero because of... Uh, because of the time you no know, uh, meron nang nalanta so 22% na naman na nakarating do sa packing house ay uh, rated as defected pero wala zero sa decade kasi hindi pa siya uh, time ang mabulok kasi konti pa lang mabilisan within the day nakarating sa packing house ano but 17% damaged and 3% discarded merong napatapo na you no know. And out of that, no, the grade 1 ang pupunta sa export market. Ibig sabihin ng grade 1, ito yung best of the best na produce mo will go to the export market. And the grade 2 or the one port or 25% will go to the local retail market where again 35% will be discarded. Matatapo na yan. So, um, Ang mangyayari ngayon diyan doon sa uh, epekto niyan bababa ang presyo no like here dito sa nakikita niyo rito tanggalin ko itong aking uh, yan natin nagay sa grade 1 high quality no and then you have the low quality na nakarating sa local market no 66% decrease in price right 66% Uh, kung halagang 100 pesos yan, uh, 34 na lang ang magiging value niya kasi bumaba yung presyo. Why? Because pagdating doon, nagsisimula na yung deterioration. Nagsimula siya ng 120 pagdating ng alas 10 ng tanghali ay 80 pesos na lang ang mga gulay kasi lang pa na. Therefore, farmers lose value of 13% weight loss from farm to packing house Plus, a quarter of produce gets a lower price. No. So, yun yung sinasabi natin dito na uh, detalye kung paano nawawala ang value ng ating mga produce. Here, it says here, defect, the cosmetic blemish and misshapen fruit. No? Uh, sana lang sa uh, kanyang shape o kaya may mansa ang kanyang balat. And what about the decay? These are the rotten produce. And what about the damage? Sinasabi rito, fruits that is physically damaged because of mishandling, napabaksak, ano pa, nagasgas, no? or discarded. These are the fruit that is thrown away as it is unfit for consumption. Bakit napatapon yan? Kasi pinitas ng medyo mahihin, ano na, malapit na ang kanyang mahinog, mahihinog na siya. So, yung travel na yon. inabot pa ng four days bago nakarating doon sa palengke. Then, ano na, hinog na hinog siya na roon at wala nang bumibili siyempre, pipiliin niya yung magaganda and then puper sa mga tindera na itapon. Okay, yung iba, pina, pinukuha na lang ng iba, pinapakain sa tayo. No? And again, another, another uh, graphics here. No? Ito naman ay pinapakita yung time from harvest So from farm, mga dalawang oras magka-harvest and then uh, after ma-harvest ko kolektahin yan another four hours. No? And then pupunta na ngayon dadaan na yung mga biyahero bago makarating sa wholesale market is another 16 hours. At bago makarating sa retail market sa mga palengke public market is 30 hours. Meaning uh, di isang o, isang uh, araw at kalahati na. Uh, anong epekto niyan no? The effect would be from the farm, there will be quality loss. Quality loss meaning uh, hindi na siya fresh, uh, na overripe. So 65% defected, 40% decayed, and there will be 33% damage. Doon sa collection point kung saan iniipon yung mga napamili ng mga biyahero, no, there will be 47% defected, 32% decayed, and 37% damage. Now, as we go along, hanggang sa whole market, there is uh, another figure at the, dito, meron ng 80% damage 
At pagdating sa retail market, is 6%, 68% damage now. And the quantity loss, ano may sinasabing quantity loss, eh di nabawasan na ng timbang kasi gumagaan na yan as, as time passed by. So there will be 20% discarded, 11.5% discarded sa collection point, another 10% sa wholesale market, and another 13.6% discarded in the retail market. And with the total, all of those things, there will be 56%, more than half of quantitative losses na bawasan ng timbang, umunti na yung iyong kilo or number noong iyong paninda from farm to market, more than half. So, what is the impact of post-harvest loss? No, post-harvest loss is particularly acute in less industrial countries uh, like the Philippines where it claims as much as 50% of fruits and vegetables are lost. As the world's population grows and our available resources shrink, each pound of food produced that goes uneaten, tinakain is wasted, opportunity to improve the health of people, the environment, and economies. No. Therefore, um, people, reducing post-harvest loss strengthens livelihood. Kung matututo tayo ng tamang pag-handle nitong ating mga produce, uh, by reducing the post-harvest losses, it strengthens livelihood for farmers and families who depend on agriculture for their income. It can also ensure more food gets to more people. And therefore, by year 2050, and this one is uh, ito ay ginawa pa noong 2016, if unsustainable food production trends continue, the world will require a 70% increase. Noong itong pag-aaral na ginawa noong 2016, ang sabi na dapat noong 2016, bago dumating ang 2050, ay maparami ang produksyon ng pagkain by more than by 70%, at least 70% para mapakain ang mga projected na dami ng tao by year 2050. Therefore, with a global population expected to reach 9 billion by 2050, reducing inefficiencies associated with post-harvest loss will be critical to feeding the population of the future. And then, uh, let us look at this no. Let us look at our planet no. in Sub-Saharan Africa. Is cierto. 40% of stable foods are lost before making it to the market. The environmental cost of producing all the food for nothing is staggering. Talagang uh, inabunuhan mo pa lahat na ng klaseng technology ginamit mo and yet 40%, all mas kalhati inong mga produce mo ay sayang lang. So 50% of fruits and vegetables, ito yung mga losses, 20% in cereals and 40% of fruit and tubers. What about the carbon emissions? No, yung sinasabi rito, para mong maproduce yung mga pagkain yan, nakakakontribute ang agriculture sa carbon emission na sisira yung ating atmosphere because of the greenhouse effect. We also use press water na sana magagamit sa iba, and yet ginamit mo sa pagkain, produce ng pagkain, nasayang lang naman. Also, the farmland, the arable farmland is wasted and soils are degraded unnecessarily because uh, ginamit mo sa, sa, uh, sa agriculture. No? And yet, yung napuproduce mo, more almost kalahati noon will go to waste. So, very ironic ng ating uh, ating nangyayari sa atin. These are global uh, global nasabi natin situation. Global situation. Buong mundo nakakaranas nito. Therefore, gusto ko maintindihan nyo why we are trying to uh, imbue to you as, as young students the importance of uh, the post-harvest uh, operation para maiwasan niya ito mga losses. Maintindihan nyo. Also, post-harvest losses could impact the profit. Why? The economic development and global competitiveness of agriculture dependent nations and livelihoods of farmers suffer when crops and food exports don't make it to market. Okay? Uh, in less industrial countries, 40% of losses occur before the food even hits the market. Losses often 
happen during harvest, transport, and processing. And then 15% recovering food loss at, at and immediately following harvest can boost the income of smallholders, farmers by 15%. 15%. Ang sinasabi rito, kung matutok tayo ng tamang post-harvest procedure, ay eh, yung ating kita pwede increase ng 15% for the simple reason na yung sanang mga losses yung mawawala, yung itatapon, ay eh, pwede mo pang pagkakitaan dahil ito ay nakarating sa market and to the consumer in good condition. Cutting food loss and waste achieves a triple bottom line. It strengthens livelihood for farmers and families who depend on agriculture for their incomes. It cuts inefficiencies and diversifies the supply chain for businesses and it saves precious natural resources, reducing harm to our environment. Right? So, ito na lang yung uh, ilan sa mga part ng ating introduction. So, solving the solvable. May pag-asa pa masolve ito. O paano sosolvin itong magagawa pa natin ng remedyo, ika nga, ang mga losses na ito. So, the United Nations Global Goals. Ito ay sama-samang pinagplanuhan ng mga iba-ibang bansa. Mayaman, mahirap. No? Provide a comprehensive vision for a sustainable future. However, their broad reach often leaves individuals, organizations, and governments wondering Where do we begin? We believe that starting with focus on specific solvable problems within the context of these goals offer a path forward to create enduring systemic change. No? At its heart, our approach to solving the problem of post-harvest loss focuses on the supply chain from the field to the market. It starts with how and when Farmers in the regions experiencing the great, greatest loss, especially small farmers, plant, harvest, and store their crops, and continues along the chain to consider the transportation, handling, processing, packaging, and marketing, which is required to improve the amount of food that reaches consumers. An efficient, productive food system with minimized loss is our goal and one that is well within reach. Kaya rin naman daw yan. We can ensure people are fed and that small holding farmers move beyond subsistence income. Ano ba yung subsistence income? Ito yung uh, basta mabuhay lang, basta may makain lang, subsistence para mabuhay. Ano? But hindi yan ang goal natin ang mabuhay lang kundi kumita at umunlad. The answers are evident. But they require investment, infrastructure, Policy, technology, and real champions. Sino ba itong mga real champions? Ito yung mga managmumove ng mga ganitong uh, uh, layunin. Ano? These are personalities. They are committed collaborators across the public, private, and social sectors. So, that ends our little introduction. No? I hope na nagkaroon kayo ng Uh, um, pagkaintindi sa importance nitong ating pag-aaralan. At ano ba itong ating uh, anong kahalagahan na ito? Therefore, the unit competency, itong inyong makukuhang talaman o kakayanan, competence, no? is the carry out harvest and forced harvest operation. Pa paano mag-ani at pagkatapos mag-ani, ano yung gagawin? No? So, The, this module, the unit covers the knowledge, skills, and attitudes required to perform harvest and post-harvest operation of major agricultural crops, including maintaining quality of produce for distribution. This unit also includes proper use of tools, equipment required to perform the activities. Okay, so now we are going to 
discuss naman itong itong mismong ating kurso na ito. No? Just a minute. I'm trying to fix this thing. Okay. So, here are the summary of learning outcomes. Number one. Um, so, uh, upon completion, itong module ito, no, new uh, student or trainees will be able to, number one, perform the pre-harvest operation. Second is to perform ha ha harvesting activity. Yung pre-harvest, uh, preparation niya bago ka mag-ani. Tapos yung apple ng pag-ani. And then perform post-harvest operation after mag-ani na. And then monitor storage pests and diseases. Yan yung uh, apat na learning outcomes natin. So, doon sa pre-performed uh, post-harvest operation, ano, kung uh, kayo ay ating uh, i-grade, ano, you should be able, dapat makita ng mga assessor na uh, marunong kayo mag-identify ng crop maturity. Ano ba yung crop maturity? Kung yan ay magulang na, kung hinug na, kung pwede ng pitasin at mayroong tinatawag ng parametro o parameters affecting physiological growth and physical indicators. Also, importante na ma-verify muna yung records of crop agronomic history. Kailan ba yung itinanim? Kasi bawat isang crop ay dapat merong record kailan siya na itanim. Kasi from the point na siya ay naitanim mo na, ay more or less alam mo na kailan mo ang pwede niyang pag-aani. Kaya importante yung record na yon. And reference to maturity, kailan siya mahihinog, kailan siya magulang. Also, kinakailangan din iprepara yung field na pag-aanihan mo and by removing obstructions and then check record crop to be harvested. So there will be parameters of crop maturity. Ito yung mga uh, pag-aaralan din natin. Physiological growth and physical indicators, obstruction from the field. No? Uh, Siyempre, yung mga nakahambalang daw mga sanga, dapat tanggalin niyo muna. No? Harvesting tools and materials, Siyempre, kinakalang mayroong dala kang mga pang-harvest. No? Now, the conditions. The student's trainers must be provided with the following. Or the student should provide the following. Number one, materials, tools, farm implement, and simple equipment. And also, kinakailangan uh, ano, yung damit mo ay bagay sa pag-aani. So, meron kang PPE, personal protective equipment, na ito naman, nasabi natin, kinakailangan maari yung haba manggas, uh, may meron kang sumblero, anything that could protect you from excessive heat, ng sun rays, okay? Yan, kung maari may glove din. Plus yung, yung uh, bota. No? Kasi hindi lang yan, maba, hindi lang yan dahil puti, kundi if there are uh, mga untowards na mga ano dyan, like mga ahas, kung ano pang mga uh, blunt uh, object yan, mga matutulis o mga, yung mga tinik-tinik dyan, eh kung meron kang bota, eh mapuprotektahan siyempre. Kasi pinakamalapit na mga disgrasya pa mo kasi yun malapit sa, sa elements. You know? So, there should be uh, individual self-paced learning. Okay? Dapat on your pace, matuto kayo. Uh, there will be lecture. You know? And then the assessment method, is written examination, interview, practical application, demonstration, and direct observation. But those things could change kasi nga uh, bigla na tayo ng decision ng uh, hindi na pwede ang face-to-face. -face, no? Maraming naging uh, problems kami sa, sa college. You know? uh, hindi napaghandaan talaga na maganda ito. Kaya we go back to uh, online uh, lectures. Now, um, as an introduction, no, pag-usapan natin yung maturity of crops, this uh, generally refers to the attachment of the last stage of the biological function of the part of a plant 
or the complete plant. It can also be a specific stage in the plant life or of the fruit which they grow to maximum size. No? So, yung maturity, eh, yan yung magulang na pwede nang pitasin. No? Now, mara dalawang klase yung crop maturity. Yung una, yung physiological. Kung saan... Uh, pwedeng talagang yung buto niya eh, ripe na, uh, matured na, pwede na sumibol, yun yung physiological. Pero meron din tayong tinatawag na harvest maturity kung saan uh, ating hinaharvest siya depende sa gusto ng market. Kaya siya harvest maturity. Uh, sample natin. No? Hindi ka po pwedeng magbenta noong mais na puti yung kinakain natin, masarap at matamis, kung siya ay yung magulam na kasi matigas yung pagkailaga. So, meron talaga siyang time na harvest maturity. Pero yung kung titingnan nyo, hindi po pwedeng mabuhay pa yung buto na yan kasi yan ay ano pa, yung kumbaga hindi pa siya matured na matured. Pero kung iintayan mo naman siyempre mamature siya, ah, hindi na siya pwedeng ilaga kasi matigas na siya. Hindi na siya masarap. So, merong physiological maturity at harvest maturity were us ang sinusulod natin ay yung demand ng market another thing is the maturity index for a commodity is a measurement or measurements that can be used to determine whether a particular example of the commodity is mature these indices are important to the trade in fresh fruits and vegetables for several several reasons no ito yon ang attributes no Tatlong bagay ito for the grower. Ito yung nagtanim, handler, ito yung mga biyahero at consumer. Ito yung kakain na, yung bumibili na. Sa grower, ano, uh, ang tinitingnan niya yung good appearance, high yield, maraming mamunga, siyempre resistant to disease, easy to harvest, and resist damage. Ang mga handler naman, ito na lang ang kanya tinitingnan. Good appearance, shelf life, matagal, matagal siya bago mabulok. Ano? matagal bago ma-deteriorate at saka firmness yung medyo may katigasan pa ng konti mahahalata mo naman yan ang mga consumer naman ito yung kanilang tinitingnan good appearance ba diba? mapili ang mga consumer firmness ipipisil-pisilin pag uh, medyo lantutay na hindi eh, na ayaw nila and of course gusto rin na yung flavor of course other different commodities have different flavor preference ng mga consumer And of course, the nutritional value. So harvesting at the correct maturity is key. Harvesting at the correct maturity uh, is key to satisfying quality expectation, to satisfying quality, uh, quality expectation. So another thing, maturity in indices is it also uh, means the harvest indices. No? So the importance of maturity indices, sensory and nutritional quality use for the press market or pedis of processing and the adequate shelf life facilities or facilitate marketing standards. Now here is the overview of the cost harvest handling. There are at least five uh, uh, stages, you know. Sa post-harvest. Nagsisimula tayo sa harvesting and then packaging. Then after packaging, it goes to the storage whereas pupunta yan sa mga refrigeration o kaya yung uh, right temperature para hindi magkaroon ng uh, early uh, deterioration. And then of course, we need transportation. And then after ma-deliver yan sa mga intended, the outlets now goes to the marketing So what is post harvest handling, you know? Post meaning after. Post harvest after harvest. And harvest naman is defined as the gathering of a ripened crop, the crop itself or the yield from it in a single growing season or seasons for gathering crops. Post harvest handling, the stages of crop production immediately following harvest which collectively includes The producer, uh, the procedures, operations, movements, or steps completed after harvesting. Yeah, na intindihan natin ang post harvest. No, simple lang naman yun. 
but we need what we call technology or post-harvest technology. So post-harvest technology involves harvesting, uh, uh, may techniques sa pag-harvest, ano? hindi basta pitas. May mayroong mga techniques yan. Pag-handle din, uh, paano kung i-handle mo, eh, i-itsa mo lang, or mababasag yun, o magagasgas, you know? And there should be a proper way to handle or storing and moving the produce to reduce losses. Again, ha, yung ating minag-uusapan, we're trying to reduce the losses, which is uh, very uh, prevalent yan. From the farmers, uh, from the farm to do sa collecting point pa lang, eh, naku, mayroon na kaagad. So dito pa lang, ay kinakailangan ma-reduce na agad natin yung mga losses na yan. It's of utmost important to maintain the freshness or to minimize the deterioration of products from harvesting, marketing, and to the time they are consumed. Now, here are the most important. Ito ang pinaka-importante sa post-harvest. By the way, PH is post-harvest handling and technology. Okay? Ito yung kung bakit natin ginagawa ang post-harvest technology. Number one is to maintain quality. Okay? Yung appearance. As much as possible kung noong hinarvest natin to the maximum na kaya natin ay pareho pa rin ang appearance niyan, yung texture, yung flavor, and nutri nutritive value ng sustansya, eh na-maintain pa rin natin. How to do that? Ayun ang mga, uh, may mga technologies tayo. And then protect food safety. And also to reduce losses between harvest and consumption. Now here are, here are the current issues of post-handling post-harvest handling and technology in the Philippines. Dito sa Pilipinas, no? the increase in vegetable and fruit production don't guarantee sufficient supply of good quality products for consumer to eat and the grower to sell due to post-harvest losses. Ibig sabihin naman to, hindi como madami ang harvest natin, no? maganda ang production natin, eh makakapag-supply na tayo ng marami. Why? Because there could be post-harvest losses. Imagine, ha, nasa mga 40 to 50 percent ang nawawala. So sayang yung ating increase in production kung hindi natin mape-prevent itong mga losses na ito. The percentage losses in vegetable production is from 28 percent to 42 percent of the annual production under Philippine condition. Why? Due to lack of post-harvest facilities and technology. No? Basta na. At walang mapaglaglahan. Walang mapaglagyan. No? This is because the Philippines is still lagging behind in post-harvest technologies as compared to the developed countries. Yun, doon tayo naiiwanan. Hindi natin ma-preserve ang ating mga produce. Kaya uh, along the way ay nagkakaroon tayo ng great losses. So, here, are the, here are the objectives of applying post-harvest handling and technology. Again, to maintain quality, such as appearance, texture, flavor, and nutritive value, to protect food safety, and to reduce losses between the harvest and consumption. Therefore, effective management during the post-harvest period rather than the level of sophistication of any given technology is the key in reaching the desired objectives. While large-scale operation may benefit from investing in costly handling, machinery, and high-tech cost harvest treatment, often these options are not practical for small-scale handlers. Instead, simple low-cost technology is often appropriate for small volume, limited resource commercial operations, farmers involved in direct marketing, as well as for suppliers to exporters in developing countries. So here are the issue. Oo nga, at uh, kailangan natin ng mga facilities, but this cost so much. No? Hindi kaya ng mga ordinary farmers. So kaya nga, tinuturoan natin as much as possible to the level nito mga ordinary farmers ang tamang teknik ng pag-harvest at pag-preserve kahit wala tayo ng mga sophisticated na mga machineries and equipment. No? Yung infrastructure na yun, ang kalimitang wala tayo. And these are the uh, major activities in post-harvest handling. Do you have the sizing? Pag sinabing sizing, eh, paghihiwa-hiwalay niyong magkakasay sa magkakatimbang. And then curing, 
merong um, kalimisan yung pagka-advance na may mga curing na gilagamitan ng mga light, yung blue light. No? Meron mga iba, uh, is chemical treatment, uh, waxing. Alam nyo, yung mga masanas na yan, meron yung wax na ipinapahid dyan eh, para maiwasan yung uh, um, uh, paglabas noong uh, tubig do sa loob ng ano. Kaya minsan, uh, meron dalawang buwan na yung masanas sa loob ng rep nyo, di pa nabubulok because of meron yung wax. Ano. Then you have the classifying, storing. Tanong, masama ba sa yung wax? Ay, hindi naman. Pero mas maganda hugasan yung bago, kainin. And then you have the storing, sorting, packaging, packing and packaging for transportation or for transporting. So if we are uh, going to uh, look at the directions, it all started at the farm and then merong uh, rural assembly market kung saan yung mga small uh, farmers na yan, eh, merong biyahero yung namamakyaw at siya ang mag-iipon para pag naipon niya saka siya magre-renta o kung baka meron siya sasakyan para ma-transport no. Uh, yung uh, diretso niyan ay pwedeng sa wholesaler no. Tapos uh, merong farm, pack house and the packing house no. Kung binayaran niyan. Ah uh, nilalagay natin sa magandang mga containers ano. And then goes to the wholesaler and retailer and direct to the consumer. So along the way, you know, hindi naman necessary link that that and then because a rural assembly could uh, bypass the wholesaler and the retailer and go directly to the store. Lalo na kung siya na may ari ng tindahan. It also is true kung do sa mga packing house, you know, yung nag impact nag babalot yung mga anong yan, eh siya na rin na magtinda. No, so there could be a store along the way. So hindi kina kailangan dumaan lahat yan. So harvesting and preparation for market, no, small scale producers have the option to harvest earlier. When produce are more delicate and valuable, harvest later when fruits are at are at riper, more flavorful stage, or harvest more open, taking advantage of multiple harvest. Uh, gather produce at its optimum stage of maturity. Yung sinasabi rito ay pwede kang mag-harvest ng mas maaga. Lalo na kung small scale. Kasi nga, yung mga small scale ay eh, hindi naman sila equip noong mga mga uh, inatawag nating refrigeration equip na facility. So, harvest na maaga para hindi ka agad na mahihinog. Ano? sa sa daan na siya may hino. At ang ibang sabi ay uh, mag-harvest ng mas malimit. So miyat miya siguro every other every other day saka ka mag-harvest. Huwag mong intayin bultuhan. As much as possible piliin yung tama ng harvesting at unti-unti uh, kumbaga uh, uh, harvest more of ten, mas malimit. And all of these options can lead to higher profits due to higher value of the produce you can or you have to offer sale like uh, isa sa mga uh, pinababago nating practice agent eh, sa pagha-harvest ng coffee no ang tama talagang pagha-harvest ng coffee pipiliin mo lang yung pula and leave it yung mga berde pa na napatunayan na yan na mas masasarap at saka mas mataas ang quality kung hinarvest ang coffee beans na um, siya ay pula rather than green. But unfortunately, the current practice or the old practice na mga nag-harvest ng kape ay basta may pula na pag hila niyan, using his hands, ay eh, dala na pati yung green. Kaya nga, uh, tinuturo natin yung uh, piliin lang. Siyempre, sabi ng iba ay mag naman kung ganun kasi nagbabayad ka ng mga tauhan tapos pabalik-balik ka ron baka mas marami kang mapabayad sa labor. Now here is the maturity standards, you know. These are characteristics of the commodity at the different stages of maturity with the use of particular type of maturity index, you know. A criteria in harvesting crops at maturity allows handlers to begin their work with the best possible 
quality produce. It is used to determine the proper maturity of a crop before harvesting. So, merong standard yan. I will, uh, I will show it later. The maturity indices, ano, elapsed days from full bloom to harvest. So, yan ay uh, yeah, kaya importante yung recording. Ano. Also, mapapansin nyo doon sa mga milon saka sa pakwan, yung tangkay niya, meron tinatawag na abscission layer. Mga palatandaan niya ng mga sanay sa milon at sa pakwan kung saan medyo merong na form na layer doon sa tangkay. Ano. Uh, may picture ako mamaya niyan. Surface morphology and structure, the cuticle formation, netting in melons, glossiness, and presence of natural wax. Mapapansin nyo, may mga rutas na parang may mapapansin nyo, waxy na yung kanyang ano, and cuticle formation. So, yan ay mga palatandaan. No? Also, also size, all fruits and many vegetables. So, specific gravity, shape, uh, compactness of the flower vegetables, solidity. Like for lettuce, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, and other fruits. Now, uh, textural properties. Ano ba yung mga textural properties? Pimness. For apple, ay, siyempre ayaw mo na medyo malambot. No? Pierce and stone fruits. Tenderness. Malambot naman for peas, legume pads. Kasi pag siya nakita uh, mo yung mga legumes, Eh, matigas na yung buto, magulang na yun, hindi na masarap yung gulay. So, tenderness naman tinitingnan. Color, external, yun nakikita sa labas. All fruits and vegetables. For all fruits and vegetables, we are looking at the color. Internal color and structure. Now, ano yung ibig sabihin niyan? Internal sa loob. Bago mo decision ng pitasin, ang kamatis, merong tingnan mo yung jelly formation sa loob niyan. No? And fresh color of some fruits. So yung kung meron ng parang jelly o magbiyakan ng isang isang uh, kamatis at meron ng jelly uh, formation doon. No, alam niyo naman yung jelly, ano, medyo sticky siya. Uh, pwede na siyang i-harvest. Pero pag nakita mo na malutong pa siya talaga at saka murang-mura pa ay refrain from harvesting. So titingnan mo rin yung kanyang color or external. Um, compositional factors also we are looking at the starch you know, the starch contents you know. ito ay kalimitan sa mga root crops uh, kasaba mga taro yan ay kasi mga sources na, na maraming starch yan so yung, kung marami na siyang nakikita kang o oh, madedetermine na starch you know. by the way, paano may measure yan o yung mga instruments you know. as well as for sugar sugar content for fruits you know. Uh, mayroong tinatag na uh, retractometer na may, para ma-measure ang sugar contents. Acid content ng mga citrus, melons, and kiwi fruit. Uh, kiwi fruit. Diba? Yung mga maaasin. We are looking at the acid content. Juice content for citrus also. Uh, like uh, mga oranges. Ano? Oil content for avocado, nuts, and some legumes. Astringency. or the tannin content for persimmon dates. No? Internal ethylene concentration for climacteric roots. Ano ba yung ethylene concent concentration? Ito yung uh, ano eh, uh, ito yung responsible itong ethylene sa paghinog ng isang prutas. Parang gas, gas yan eh. No? So, kasabihan niya, pagka naglagay ka ng isang hinog, na putas doon sa isang isang uh, tiklis na mangga. May isang hinihilaw pa yon Ako, napakabilis may hinog ng iba because yung hinog na mangga, nagre-release siya ng ethylene at nadadamay yung mga hilaw na mangga. Kaya mabilis din silang may hinog. For root crops naman, bulbs and tubers, like radish and carrot, we are looking at the large enough and crispy over mature Pity. So ito yung mga tinitingnan natin, iba-ibang gulay, like root crops. Eh, may mga decision criteria tayo kung po pwede nang i-harvest. Uh, how about potato, onion, and garlic? Ay nakikita ito do sa mga tangkay niya. When tops beginning to dry out and topple down. Uh, hindi tangkay niya, tawag niya, kundi yung, yung leaves niya sa ibabaw. Yun ay mga palatandaan. 
What about the yam bean and ginger? Ganun din, ano? Lord, kinakailangan itong uh, malalaki na. No? Yung, kung sa ginger, huwag kang magkukay kung napakaliit pa ng laman. Intayintayin mong lumaki siya. Pagka naman na overmature, ay matigas na itong mga ube. Ganun din yung ginger, nagiging fibrous. No? So may tamang tamang ano panahon kaya siya ay harvest. And normally, malalaman mo yan. Kung sa ube, kapag naglaglag na yung kanya, parang nadadry na mga dahon, as well as sa ginger. Natupuyo na. How about the green onion? Leaves at their broadest and longest. Yung green onion naman, eh, wala yung onion sa ilalim na intended na kukuhanin. Ang pinagamit yan ay eh, yung dahon. So kung siya ay pinakamahaba na at uh, doon sa malaki, doon mo na siya i-harvest. And don't wait for the bulb. Hindi yun ang purpose niya. For fruit vegetables, ano, like coffee bean, lima bean, garden pea, wing bean, well pea pods, that's not readily greenness. No? Merong palatandaan yan, yung mga bunggo, yung balatong. Kapag ka, pag, pag uh, hinawakan mo, parang kusa nang pumuputok yung kanilang mga pods, yun pwede na siyang i-harvest. No? May mga palatandaan yan. Pero kung hindi pa, para medyo sariwa, pagka makita nyo yung dry na yung kanyang pads, ano, ay palatandaan yan. Ladies finger or okra, by the way, ha, baka walang din nyo alam yan. Desirable size, rich, and tips of which can be snap readily. No, yung ayaw mo ng magulang yan, yung medyo pag uh, pinitas mo ay eh, ano pa, mura-mura pa siya. Kasi pag magulang, fibrous na yun. How about gourds? Ang, ang palaya, no? desirable size, rich and thumbnail can still penetrate flesh readily or overmature thumbnail cannot penetrate flesh readily. Kapag ka medyo yung iyong uh, uh, daliri, yung lalaki mo ay nakaka, uh, ano na, nakaka-penetrate sa flesh. No? So may pan-testing yung mga yan. Uh, sanay mag-harvest niya. Mayroon pala tandaan. About eggplant, ano? sayote and cucumber. So ito naman size, desirable size. Rich but still tender. Yun. At uh, alam niyo naman, yung itsura ng talong kapag uh, ano na, uh, matured na matured na siya. Hindi na siya nabebenta. Yung medyo nagbabago na ang kanyang pagiging ng kulay niya na kalimitan ng talong kasi yung uh, dark na uh, Parang dark violet. Alam, alam naman ang kulay noon. Pero it changes to parang medyo nag-yellowish. Started to yellow. Ayan, hindi na masarap. Hindi na yan na beben. So, over mature. So, uh, pagdating naman sa mga flower vegetables. You know, actually, yung cauliflower. Flower nga ang tawag doon. So, curd compact. Over mature. It cluster elongates and becomes loose. Sa broccoli naman, the bud cluster compact. No? Buo pa, compact pa siya. Kasi kapag ka napasobra na, uh, medyo loose na. No? Um, uh, ayun, nakikita niyo naman mga broccoli at saka cauliflower. Anong itsura noong ang gagaling sa bagyo? Uh, pinipili nila yung ano pa, parang buong-buo pa siya. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina na red rock hometer. Ano? Kung saan? Yung patas noong o juice noong gulay kamatis citrus no or mangga ipapatak mo diyan malalaman mo ang sugar content at uh, mayroong mga table kung minsan kung saan yung sugar content would indicate the maturity indices noong kung pwede na talaga siyang i-harvest no ang pinya ayan ito uh, actually ako order nito sa Lazada eh. mura na lang dati ito mga 25 Uh, sa Lazada, naka-order, mga ano lang, 400, 300 na lang. Yan. Refractometer. So, I think uh, we need to cut short muna rito because we will have uh, a new topic, itong mga parameters. And uh, ikakat muna natin dito ang ating lecture and I will uh, uh, record another one after this. All right, thank you very much for listening. And this is part one of our lecture.